this was uh, Steve-O talking on the T-Fat K, the Brendan Schaub show that's now being basically helmed by him and a couple of co-hosts that he has revolving due to, of course, the issues that Brian Callen's going through. You can check my previous videos to find out what that's about. But um, this appearance from Steve-O essentially detailed or kind of emphasized some of the reason why people don't like Brendan Schaub. I've said it mentioned before. I don't really mind the guy. I think he's okay in small doses. Unfortunately, if you're whole if your whole media intake revolves around Shaw from the below the belt to the stuff he does in his podcast to the other appearances he does on other shows, then he can get a bit exhausting. But much like um, Bert Kreischer in that if you take him in small doses, he's pretty digestible. The same thing you have to do with Brendan Shaw and, you know, it is what it is. But I still think there's, not, uh, I, there's, still think there's a route for him to turn to sort of turn the sentiment around him back around because I think if you see how he communicates with people in the scene and his peers, friends, whatever they may be, even if it has to do with him being friends with Joe Rogan, you do get the impression that people actually like him as a person. They think he's an actual good dude, which goes a long way, I think, in general than, you know, the hate comments you get online from random people that don't know you. I think the people that have to deal with you day to day, if they generally like your company, they think you're a pretty decent, if not harmless personality, then I don't, I think everyone else should give him a chance and give him an opportunity to rectify himself but i think that's the situation that's where he's missing out on that kind of acknowledgement or kind of self-awareness of knowing exactly why people aren't necessarily fans of him and also being understanding enough of knowing that it's not just because of hate it's not just because they're not oh they're, they're not as successful as i am that's why they don't like me blah, blah blah it's like no they cannot like you because you just maybe represent everything that they hate about you know um the entertainment industry at the moment which is an okay situation which is an okay which is an okay POV to have. If it's, it, you know, it's a bit hatery, don't get me wrong, but it's okay to feel that way. And Steve-O essentially kind of pulls him up on one bit of it where he essentially tries to, you know, make it seem as if, you know, I am this hardworking, um, you know, guy that goes, digs, that digs fucking tunnels and, you know, works in the coal mine when I'm doing stand-up comedy, when it's not really that big of a deal, really, if you think about it. And again, it's funny that he'd mention the, he'd mentioned the cosign of his agency as being some sort of validation of how hard he's working and really in fact of course his his, his agency saying this about him is equivalent to when those girls on only fans say hey look i'm the top one percent earner on only fans like of course only fans are going to tell you that so that you keep uploading content you know what i mean it's, it's come on but hey let's continue here you know you're you're not posting the countless time you put into doing that special and how many shows you do on the road like for CA, I think uh, two years ago, this previous year before all this COVID shit happened, CA goes, you are you did the most cities out of any comic we have, man. So no one, they don't see that grind wow, that yeah. goes in mm, to, wow. to get into that special. It's so funny you know? when you put it that way, but they also, they also don't see how you're bringing home a check every time you practice. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Exactly. That's the point, right? And that's the issue why people don't like Brendan in, in terms of stand-up comedy because he didn't have to graft how everyone else grafted, which is not fair. I think however you come into the industry, however you make it is how you make it. I think if you're funny, funny is funny. I think that's one thing I've basically learned from listening to the podcast. It's not necessarily how you make it because there's so many ways to make it. There's no set way to make it. But there obviously is acknowledgement that there is a bit of a cheat code when you're such close friends with somebody like a Joe Rogan and you have his work ethic. Now, don't get me wrong. Not everyone that's been around Joe Rogan has been able to make a career out of themselves. That's for sure. But if you're able to, if you're at least a little bit hardworking, right, you can get very, very far in life if you're associated with somebody that can essentially co-sign you, walk you through some doors, introduce you for some people, uh, ex extol your flipping graces and whatever malarkey and if you're able to of course if you're going to show too you're able to perform really well it can obviously help you but to somehow suggest that the good word of your agency is saying oh you're a hard-working guy is somehow a uh, validation that you're working hard is a little bit rich to be honest you know everyone in their own way work should i say everyone works hard that's not really true either to be honest don't get me wrong he has his point he does work hard i'm sure in terms of comedians he's probably a freak right because most of those guys don't even you know they don't even redo their act they still have the same act that they have still touring on from flipping 10 years ago so i'm sure this guy at least trying to write new jokes and talk from an introspective contemporary or yeah or from a now moment does probably set him apart but to suggest somehow that you know hard working at something is enough is a little bit rich especially when you're you know you got a bit of the cheat code that he's got when it comes to being associated with rogan and then the other clip which was really funny was this one <laughs> um, um where can i get it hold on, hold on hold on hold on where is it 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 yeah this one i think this is the one right i think i've got it here let's load it up on here if it loads up well let's pause it 
Is it paused? If it's paused, let's get up on screen. And this again is another reason why he's not well liked. And this is this was definitely the kind of I think the inflection point of what kind of tipped some people over the edge. I think of course their move from Fox onwards was basically a bit of the downward spiral because that's when Brendan started to get a bit of steam and he started to pick up a bit of steam, started to sell out shows. And naturally, at that infancy in comedy, at anything you're doing, you're obviously going to start feeling yourself, feeling, thinking that your shit doesn't stink and blah, 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 blah. The below the belt stuff was popping up. He signed a deal with Showtime and suddenly he was going sky high, right? So that's when the ill feelings started to come because people started to feel exactly he started to change in front of the camera. And then, of course, the AMA on, on Reddit went completely bad. They, weren't, they didn't take it in good jest. They didn't laugh at themselves. They took it too seriously. It became us v. Dem haters and haters and all that sort of nonsense but this was definitely the inflection point was the, obviously the comedy special that he did on Showtime that was trash and Steve-O sort of caused him on this alert. Do, do you have the antibodies after your, I do. your dust up with some- <laughs> <laughs> let's go back on it let's just go back on it <laughs> I didn't do it I'm, I'm doing I'm straight up doing ass and improv in Dallas this weekend okay. so I'm back on regular all right, right. Do, do you have the antibodies after your I do your dust up with some <laughs> 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 this guy here in the corner like he lost such such i don't know he lost in such an la way in it right this exaggerated like everything is so like he'll these guys will make you feel like you're fucking dave Chappelle, in it hanging around with them in it like god damn it man everything is so hilarious like it's not really that funny really let's just relax it's maybe funny because everyone's thinking whatever they're thinking in their head right because like i said i think the moment these good Brian and Brenda got COVID is when everyone turned against them. Like, you know what? We've had enough of these guys. They got COVID. They were they were so dismissive of it in the beginning anyway, right? They were so... Like, do you remember how angry they were? Like, about having not being able to tour and do their flipping stand-up shows as if these shows are somehow serving humanity in some big grandiose way in whatever way shape or form is and then they went out of their way to put their show on because their fans must see them live right imagine of all the things you want to do um post lockdown the one thing that you're dying to do is to see brendan shaw and brian callan tell fucking dick jokes on stage they go out and do it and instead of doing it in a covid secure way because at the moment now it's changed right the sentiment everyone's sort of touring everyone's doing these driving show and park shows but even then just take some just be a little bit respectful of what's going on have some sort of um, um understanding of the climate uh distance you know put some safety measures in place because i remember even you said oh it's not my responsibility it's a comedy club i'm just a, i'm just a talent i'm just a talent it's like yeah of course but now things have changed you all have to take responsibility now you have to kind of put your um your quest to make money your quest to go and connect with your fans your quest to go and sell merch your quest to go and you know um what was i think he said um your quest to go and what's that thing you said about Joe and um uh, Fingy Majiggy? Um look not not lame pipe. What was that fucking phrase they used? Uh oh, whatever that phrase was, right? Because well, you have to think about it. Most of these most of these guys, as much as they talk about going connecting with fans, stand up for them is mostly an opportunity to kind of get out, get away from the family, right? Make some money in the road and hang out with your friends, right? That is mostly the the kind of allure of it, which is why they all get in trouble on the road. It's no coincidence that all the trouble seems to come from the road and never, it never comes from in-home. There's never an issue with domestic violence, with neglecting your children, um, setting fire to your house. It's never that. It's always to do with stuff on the road. Always. So this is funny. <laughs> See, people were so mean about it, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you were a dick about it, mate. You didn't acknowledge it actually existed. You thought as if like everyone was overreacting. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just a common cold. Right, and then you went to a flipping place in Texas, thinking it you it could be okay, and you end up getting your entire team infected, and then try to lie about it. And then he said, "You remember he said, oh, it was a, like he went, he didn't even quarantine. He went straight out and did like a twenty mile bike ride." You guys are dumb, dumb, and he had to delete the flipping story. <laughs> it's so awful, man. It's that's probably why people don't like the guy, isn't it? Like it's it's so amazing how successful he is, considering just how dumb he is in some respects, isn't it? But again, props to the guy. <laughs> yeah, people are brutal about it. Yeah. I, oh yeah. my god. Yeah, they were. I saw one particularly fucking. Uh... Mean look his face look headline. his face look his face hey, you gotta just... look his face he can't really t- he can't take jokes to it by himself in it he's trying to get better at it but he's so sensitive <laughs> credit to credit the person for for coming up with the wind okay. headline like <laughs> covid oh. it said covid the only thing killing at a brian shop show <laughs> <laughs> oh. brian shop as well that's what makes it better right oh, he him sh- brian shop <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 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 
No, that's funny. Now they're all laughing properly. See before the difference between the industry laughing and the real laughing, and then look at look at Brendan Schultz's face. Look at him. He is not one happy. He is not a happy bugger there, isn't it? He looks really annoyed. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Brian both got it at that show. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get it. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, again, and the honestly thing, that aside, right? I think if he's able to love himself more and take the piss at how kind of flipping dumb but successful he, he has been in life, I think he'd be okay. People would actually be fans of him once again i think even the naysayers even the guys that you know go out their way to insult him and leave derogatory comments and go out their way to sort of say the most harshest things so he can get blocked from his account i think those guys can get turned around if he was able to kind of laugh at himself and be like you know what this is ridiculous i'm a former you know um ufc fighter who stumbled upon this career because i'm hanging out with some of the best comedians in the world and now suddenly i'm selling out shows i have a successful podcast i'm going on tour places like this is ridiculous this is ridiculous like i should laugh at myself like not it doesn't happen to everybody and then once you get over that people once you're once once he's sort of over that because it feels like he, he does hold a little bit i wouldn't say he's hmm he does have there is something about him that probably does feel like a bit of a fraud in some way, shape, or form, which is you're allowed to. But I think once he's comfortable enough to accept, hey, this is how I got in the game, it is what it is, and then he's able to accept himself, people will basically move on. But the fact that he's so tense about it and defends the special and says he shouldn't, it just makes it look a bit strange. Um, and then um, I guess the last clip, no, uh, da, 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 da. oh yeah, and then the, and then the last thing to relate to this is Neil Brennan saying exactly the same thing that I'm saying, which kind of goes back to the idea of like people need to kind of lay off Brendan because. In some ways, I think um, comedy and some of the entertainment and creative things in life or avenues, there's no exact science, man, as to how to make it. You just, you make it however you make it. But most of the reason why people make it is primarily due to hard work and um, and persistence, basically, right? And Neil Brennan, in his interview with PeteMcGraw.org, I'm not sure what that is, but I remember his interview from back in the day that I wanted to kind of talk about. Um, he says this really um, amazing thing. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah. So he says a really, a really amazing thing um, regarding hard work in the scene, um, regarding hard work in comedy, right? It says here, um, here's a question from the interview. It says, if I lived in LA, I would listen to more podcasts. You spend more time in a car for longer periods. The last question is, what is the secret to success for everybody knows, uh, but what can't they seem to do? And Neil Brennan says the following. It's like diet and exercise. It's the key to weight loss and the key to success is hard work and persistence. It's unfortunate because it sucks, which is the definite truth of it, right? I think, especially in, in stand-up, you do get the impression of listening to these guys for so many hours that a lot of these guys have basically stumbled upon a career path for them that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily involve that much work. They don't have to try that hard at it, especially if you're good. I'd imagine comedy is similar to DJing in my field, where in DJing, because it's such a low barrier of entry, it's one of the only things that you can do in the music industry. It doesn't require you to have to learn an instrument to learn how to write music. Um, it's fairly easy for the most part. Again, it's the lowest form of entry to get into it, apart from singing and rapping, which again, you need to be talented or have the ability to do so in the beginning or have the confidence. Um, it obviously then... At the, in the, at the entry level, there's too many of you, right? Especially when you go to open deck night, you're like, right, everyone DJs. But quite quickly, if you have got any kind of acumen, if you've got any kind of uh, taste in music, you are familiar with tonality, um, you you kind of can feel, t you, can, you can kind of have a sense for keys and what fits together sonically, even if it's not the right tempo, um, you start to quickly see that if you just spend a little bit more time honing your craft, you can make some really big leaps and kind of surpass the people you come into the game with because most people are crap. And I think um, comedy is the same sort of thing. You stumble upon it, you go to the open mic circuit and quite quickly you realize, rah, these guys are all terrible. And if you spend just a little bit more time honing your craft with the with the uh, little intrinsic talent you might have and work ethic, you will go, you will make leaps and bounds of progression. Now, unfortunately, the higher up you go, the harder it gets because the higher up you go, the more talent everyone seems to be in a room, right? Everyone, especially from the middle tier almost, I always say, is that the big beginners there's at the bottom tier the middle tier and the top tier usually everyone in the middle tier can command the state like no even if they're not don't have the name to sell tickets most people within the middle tier of stand-up and djing can command a crowd can hold a crowd's attention can probably be undiscernible in the act compared to somebody else but unfortunately there's not as many opportunities for everybody because you're all kind of fighting, fighting for the same spots but most of the reason why those guys make it from the middle, from the bottom to the middle, is mostly to do with hard work. And he continues on that here. Uh, da, 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 da. 
He says here, um, the, in the last interview I did, this idea of, persever uh, of, of perseverance came up. We were quoting someone we've had, who, um, we had a coffee with who said, there are no failures in Hollywood, only quitters. That's taking that to an extreme. He said, and in, in Neil Brennan says the following, what's wrong with Hollywood? There's a Jerry Farrell quote, which is, in Hollywood, the losers never go home. In the argument against your friend's observation and far more cutting and probably true. The thing with Hollywood is most people are not talented and no one ever says you're not talented which is definitely true especially in the arts right it's very difficult for somebody to that's why sports is so amazing because it's so black and white if you can't jump and you can't run you don't have the coordination or you just can't perform to a certain standard you just get dashed to the side and people move on and you you, you quickly realize whether or not you're good at that thing or not or you quickly realize your level but unfortunately in the entertainment world and everything else creatively minded there is so muddy it's so kind of um it's so um hard to quantify what kind of uh leads to somebody being uh great and somebody not being so great and sometimes it has a lot to do with who you know and all that good stuff and a lot like what Bert Kreischer says most of it is just plain old luck sometimes you just come up at the right time it's like blogging right it's like um cobra snake from back in the day taking pictures of people in the scene you, if you just happen to be around in LA when the whole scene is popping off and suddenly this whole kind of EDM um, sort of electro vibe is popping and you're traveling with people, you're taking pictures, you happen to be the voice and the sort of um, official photographer for that scene, even if you're not that good at it. Just because you happen to be around and you're willing to take pictures and you stay up longer than everybody else and you don't drink and you don't smoke and all that good shit, you could just happen to create a career for yourself. Now, if you give up halfway through that time, then you're just going to be forgotten in the history books. But if you continue on to have perseverance, you just end up making it. So, and, and it's never really about talent in that regard. It continues here. A buddy of mine, Nick Stoller, who wrote and directed Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Get Him to the Greek and a bunch of other stuff, he said, every, every day in Hollywood is Christmas Eve because tomorrow is a big day, which is kind of true. Tomorrow, everyone is going to get the big prize. People drink juice out here, a performance-enhancing drug. They're trying to optimize the output and like, if they do the right juice, I'm going to cleanse right now. And it's like, you're not talented. You don't do any diet. It doesn't matter. I don't want to look at your face and you're not interesting. There's nothing about you that you can do, which is true, right? There is that kind of aspect of it about sometimes <coughs> hard work and perseverance isn't enough. You need to have some intrinsic talent. But I definitely do think when it comes to like a short, especially in LA, especially considering how some of these guys talk about their practice, it's no surprise he was able to make so much, so, he was able to progress so quickly especially with his co-signs because he's just willing to just go to more, do more shows, go on the road more, abandon his family, quote unquote, right? And kind of continue building on a platform that he's been given. And it continues here a little bit. It says, um, that, um, the, the quote the interviewer says, that's the point about hard work and perseverance that is conditioned on some level of talent. And he says, yeah, if you're not talented, the only thing you can succeed at is manual labor. Honestly, if you don't have a talent, then success will be minimal. There's it's, it's pretty proportionate talent to success level. I don't know many, especially in comedy. There are a few people that kill every night and can't get it going because they have a drug or alcohol issues and they miss their window or whatever. I remember Sebastian Manakas Manasako would be like, I can't. All I do is book birthday parties in the Middle East. I told him, you're going to be an Italian Brian Regan, trust me. He kept killing and he sold out Radio City five times. There are people that can get, can't get a show on there. If you're great at comedy, you're great at comedy, which is true, right? But again, it's 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 great. It's been obviously great at what you're doing and obviously hard work. And I definitely think there's an aspect of Brendan that's just like, he's just made it through pure grit. He's just kind of stuck in there. Even when people said he couldn't do what he could do. And now look at the success that he's been able to bring. And of course, you know, not everybody has connected with Joe Rogan is successful as he is. And I think if he's able to kind of be a little bit more self-reflective, a little bit more, um, uh, what's that word called? Whatever that thing is called, when you're self-deprecating, he'll become a lot more likable to a lot more people going forward. But again, that's only what I know, isn't it? That's only what I know. <laughs>